The start of your foundation in painting is the process. These are the step-by-step -step methods, procedures and materials that you use for creating your painting. It is important you learn efficient methods so that when you are working on your painting you can spend more time thinking and less time worrying about the process. That will make painting more fun and let you express your creativity better. This is an overview of an efficient process for painting an oil or acrylic painting. We'll look at the watercolour process later. The painting shown in this demonstration won the top gold medal prize at the Telluride Annual Plein Air Painting Competition in Colorado. Step one is the preparation. First of all, we start with the plan. Here I've sketched out the major darks and lights in the small sketchbook. I tried several alternatives and this turned out to be the best one. Step two is to map out the shapes. It is better if this drawing is not very detailed because you are only going to paint over the lines anyway. It is much better to work on the detail shapes later on when you start painting. It is important, however, to be accurate with your proportions and in this painting to get the perspective right. Step three is to do the underpainting. Darks are most effective when transparent and thin. Since it is impossible to paint a thin transparent layer on top of an opaque paint unless it's completely dry, you have to do your transparent layers first. The next step is to work out your values. You need to make sure you have your values correct before you apply a large amount of paint to the canvas. Since it is very difficult to adjust the values after you've painted large areas with thick paint. I'm testing out various different values here by painting a small part of each major shape and making a lot of comparisons using a value finder. In this way I can make sure that I've got the values correct before I continue to the next stage of painting. Step 5 is block in the darks. Now we start to paint all the big dark shapes in your design, keeping the paint layer fairly thin and using the values you established in the previous step. The reason you block in the darks first is that it is easier to paint light over dark and thick over thin than vice versa. Step 6 is block in the lights. After filling in the dark shapes, I add all the medium and lighter values as well. Step 7 is a check stage. At the end of this step, you should be able to walk back 10 paces and your painting should have a strong design still. Ask yourself these questions. Have you captured your first impression? Does the painting make a strong impact? And is the design pleasing? You need to ask yourself these questions before going on to add any detail. The next step, step eight, is refinement. In this step, you refine the shapes to make them more accurate and more interesting. You start to add the final touches of calligraphy and brushwork in order to make the painting interesting. And I usually do more work in the center of interest and the small figures in the background in this particular case. In the final stage, you have completed the detail and you look for ways to simplify the painting so that you don't lose the strong impact that you had earlier on in the painting process. This simple nine step process is the fastest way to make a painting and a lot of fun to do. It works equally well with oils or acrylics and you can complete a painting in about two or three hours. The watercolour process is very similar with one major difference. In watercolour you work from light to dark instead of from dark to light. Just as we showed earlier we map out the major shapes but in this case we take the drawing to a finer level of detail. This is because it is much more difficult with watercolour to draw with the paint because if you get the shape wrong you cannot easily scrape it off like you can with oil or acrylic paint. So you can see that this drawing is much more detailed than the drawing in the oil or acrylic process. It is okay if you leave the pencil showing in the final painting. It adds interest to the surface of the painting. This is another extra step in watercolour. With watercolour, unlike oil or acrylics, once you have put paint to paper, it's very difficult to remove. 
and almost impossible to get back to the pure white of the paper. So in this step, you plan the lightest light shapes in your painting and cover them with a rubber fluid so that you don't accidentally paint over them later. You don't have to do this. You can just be very careful when you're painting washes to avoid the white parts, but I find this easier. The next step is to paint the lights. In watercolor, it's easier to paint the lights first and gradually build up your middle and darker values. This is because once you have painted a shape very dark, it is almost impossible to lighten it later. So for this reason, it is easier to creep up on your values gradually. So gradually you start to add the darker shapes, painting on top of the lights. Since you want a color to be dark, you generally use a lot of pigment and very little water. And the final stage is the same as with oil and acrylics. You refine the smaller shapes and add the detail, taking care to leave your nice big washes intact and to limit yourself to detailing just a few areas. And there you have your final painting. So here we've seen the basic processes for doing an oil or acrylic painting and for doing a watercolour painting. Actually this is the easy part. The more difficult part is the next stage of your learning, making it look real. We'll take a look at that in lecture number three.